Hey everyone, Hydrahead here, and this is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Tempest, uh, illustrated masterpieces featuring stories by the world's gravest authors. Um, it's written by Alan Moore, you remember him as the Snake Worshipper, and Kevin O'Neill. Um, so I've never actually read A League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I've seen the movie, <laughs> and it was good, um, but never read the comics or anything like that. Apparently it was a strip comic in England, is what I'm getting from this. But anyway, the reason I picked it up is because I saw Alan Moore, and I was like, wow, Alan Moore is still writing books. I wonder who gets raped in this story. So I grabbed it. And uh, <clears throat> we get this little intro over here from these two guys LARPing as their English versions of uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Um, and they kind of give us this idea on how British comics were based on this guy, Leo Baxendale. Um, Maybe he invented League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. They don't really say why they're telling us about Leo Baxendale, other than they're really proud of him. Oh, and this is uh, Volume 4, and this actually did come out recently. So, we start off with typical Alan Moore. Typical Alan Moore. <laughs> Big old fucking old lady tits. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, they just jump right in. Uh, basically, it's these old women found this pool. They hop in. Suddenly, they're all young. And then uh, we immediately change pace 100%. <clears throat> Go to these black and white story here. Uh, Prologue 2, The City of Wee, 2996. This cool art. You can tell they're really trying to copy Jack Kirby. I'm pretty sure this is like an old reprint comic. Uh, and Alan just didn't have enough ideas to complete a full story, so they threw this in to give us a, I don't know, some kind of idea of what was going on with this particular story back in the 50s when it was written. Um, because, so when you first start reading, it's just like, why the fuck does it suddenly switch to black and white with this totally different art? This isn't even written by Alan anymore. They're using... <laughs> really weird weird words and um, using bold text as a decoration basically this is really bad about using bold text as a decoration sorry about the disorganization your predecessors disappearance took us rather by surprise I'm afraid that's not how people talk okay on screen here is the incident site from several weeks ago when Miss Knight vanished. Oh, wow, you guys got one right. Good job. Ah, ah man. Anyway, so I wonder, though, um, on that point of this annoyance, does Alan Moore decide where the bold text goes? Because I heard he did with the uh, Swamp Thing. Or is this the letterer being cheeky and just using it as decoration? Anyway, um, this basically explains something about the League from the past, and then we join... I think this is a really old Captain Universe, but I'm not super familiar with the League, so I'm probably wrong. And then I don't know who the Super Nazi is, but he's a pretty cool design. Anyway, we get these 70s porn star talking to these professionals uh, about the disappearance of some woman. Um, the guy who's worrying about it is this old dude here who's an ex-member of the League. I think it's Captain Universe, but I don't know. Um, they don't really tell us much at the beginning, to be honest. Uh, then we see this more disappointing tits on um, the statue as we rejoin our <clears throat> ugly women from the beginning of the story. That's some weird, weird art. So here they're basically... Talking about current times versus old times, and it's just a lot of exposition that I don't understand. I believe because I didn't uh, read the old original Seven Stars. Which, see, now, oh, this was League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but these people all refer to themselves as the Seven Stars. And at the back of this book, you even get this little fucking sub story England's brand new super club, Seven Stars Monthly. Right? And I think that's that old man right there. Oh, he's got blonde hair? Maybe it's not that old man. I don't know who the fuck that old man is then. 
Um, anyway, they're basically just doing a lot of exposition about characters I don't know anything about. Uh, and then we immediately switch scenes to the drum and bassment. <laughs> ah, we got um, <laughs> a bunch of whores and shit in the background. But uh, this is kind of funny. He mentions Tracy Jordan, like a real life actress name and everything. Honky Grandpa be tripping, number two, which sounds like a Tracy Jordan film. Uh, that was kind of funny. Uh, and anyway, we get um, this different group of people that we're going to be following. They're in this shady part of town, I can assume. Uh, a knocks on this door, this guy answers, and we see this um, pasty looking fool here. There's nobody here. You must have been mistaken. Huh? Man, that's messed up. And then they just walk in as the guy's like, huh? Man, that's messed up. So, it took me a little bit, <laughs> but uh, apparently that's his power. Something to do with mental prowess. Uh, and they go into this building. Apparently this is an old, like storehouse or room for their uh, their crew because uh, they're talking about their star chamber still there some of their stuff still there but it's clear that somebody else has been here recently they start um, considering who it might be they're like no the signature is female because they thought it was a guy <laughs> it's it's exciting we then jump scenes again they, uh, they really don't give us a lot of information while jumping scenes. It's just kind of a, bloop, you're there. Um, <clears throat> so now these girls are in the jungle. They've somehow migrated from the, uh, the deep, deep recesses of the desert and the Egyptian wastelands to deep in the jungle. I never noticed this before. That's a pretty cool skull with shit growing out of it. Anyway, um, while here, they're basically... I think they're actually on the moon of Titan because they they mention Titanians. Um, but anyway, one of them is pretending to be a whore and is talking to these guys on the dock who are refilling their submarine. One of the guys grabs her ass, uh, so she proceeds to kill one and rip the other one's testicle off and then tell him that uh, he needs to war... Or <clears throat> I'll just... Uh, and you report that your ship your radio operator and your right testicle were taken by pirates from Genosha. Is that clear? Uh, I really don't like the way they bold these texts. It's stupid. Some of us actually read these bubbles the way they're written. I know, it's a shock, but we do. Uh, anyway, after um, brutally assaulting this stranger and ripping his balls off simply because he, I don't know, responded to you to responded to you like the whore you were pretending to be. Uh, then they hijacked this government vessel <coughs> called the Dugong <coughs> and take off. So I'm not a big fan of this guy's art, to be honest, but his backgrounds are really cool. He does a lot of small decorative stuff. And I'm a big fan of that. I think it's neat. Oh, but don't worry. We're not going to be going over him again for a little while. No, no, no. We jump back to these not only is it black and white, but it's now calendar style. Uh, and this is what made me realize that I think these are just old reprinted comic strips. Because this is very much like a newspaper comic strip layout. Uh, it's by some dude named Novek, who, um, if you remember at the cover, they're talking about featuring stories by the world's greatest authors. Which might be a, uh, a pun on the fact that they're dead. I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, um, I'm assuming this Novek is one of the greatest of authors. And it's basically the same storyline happening here that we saw in color, except this is from the old dude's perspective. Uh, essentially, that girl... Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. This one here escaped and stole this information about some pool of youth or something and disappeared. Nobody thought it was real. Um, but they're still trying to find this chick for other reasons. They hunt her down and find her. And uh, that's when the old man realizes that she's been completely changed back to a young woman. Um, <clears throat> the dude's a massive pervert. He's just constantly talking about all the women he's fucked in his past. And everybody's just kind of like, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> but... Um, Apparently he was some, some hero, and everybody should respect him. <clears throat> but after realizing that that woman and the information that she stole really did work, 
um, he organizes a search party to go and hunt her down, basically. I, I would say, as much as the black and white stuff pissed me off, it is probably the best written of this stuff uh, in this comic, and has some of the best storyline, but very, very wordy, very, very Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, English Saturday morning cartoon, though, not uh, so comedy-filled like ours. <laughs> we then jump back to the present day. We had a cool little laboratory. Um, some fun background stuff. Rest in peace, Buster. Uh, Craig Street. I'm sure I should know who that is, but I don't because I'm not from England. Uh, LC. I don't know who that is, but I'm sure I should. We got Electro Girl's costume. And it turns out that our uh, psychic friend and his girlfriend hunted down the old Electro Girl to try and ask for her help. But uh, her power's gone out of control now that she's older. So they basically just hooked her up to the main power grid. And uh, she gets paid to power England, essentially. Um, they want her to help. She basically is like, no, no, go away. Uh, there's a lot more to that than that, but it, it's basically just, no, no, go away. And honestly, kind of pointless other than showing us that, hey, Electric Girl's still alive. Uh, we then join our lesbian assault squad back on their submarine Ugh, talking about a bunch of shit I don't understand and um, and then they mention this island that they're outside of right now um, let's see here yeah it was a kind of musical utopia discovered by naval sergeant in the 1870s took a lot of damage during the Falklands War <laughs> sometimes else that happened during my asylum years something else that happened during my asylum years uh, okay a musical utopia. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean. But, um, of course, being English, that means that it's a hippie island. So we got our yellow submarine. We got our Jerry Garcia. I don't know what this fucking <laughs> alien snuffleupagus is. And, uh, 64, love. Very much a hippie commune island. And, and apparently the ocean is pretty trippy around that area, too. I wish more of the comic was like this. This is cool. Anyway, um, they go to sleep, one person drives, they wake up, they're at their next destination, and we go back to black and white. Ugh. So in this part of the story, the old man finds his pool, he doesn't take his normal guy that helps him along, instead he takes this fucking old B-Squad dude, that guy there. Um, he looks like Woody Allen, and not in this set so much, but in the next one you'll see it's it's basically Woody Allen. Anyway, they find this pool. Um, the old dude helps the older dude into the pool, and they use some foreshadowing to kind of lead us to believe that maybe that's actually making him young like he wanted. But we immediately jump back to our lesbian assault squad and start going over their adventures. We get cursive text, like she's writing in a diary, and then a little scene... Uh, illustrating that cursive text. The cursive text is handwritten. You can tell because not all the letters are consistent, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, but overall, this is an extremely boring section of the book. We got, ha ha ha, ghosts. Whoa, pygmies. Ha <laughs> ha, orgies. Funny, right? Um, natives that, that want to build a wall or kick everybody out. Hmm. Yeah, way to try and be political, Alan Moore. And then people who respond with facial twitches, which is kind of ironic because they don't look that much different than the normal girls always look. <laughs> but whatever. Oh, look at this. We're back to black and white. Glad we had all that story development back there. <clears throat> so, and here we see the old fucker is now a young dude. Um, he looks kind of like a, a James Bond. <sighs> Woody Allen is polishing his shoes and getting his suit ready while he... Um, he finishes dressing. He starts mocking the guy. Alright, this is... This is probably my favorite part, actually, of the entire... Well, second favorite part of the entire book. Um, <clears throat> After a refreshing plunge, the new M is a new man. I don't like to kvetch, but isn't this sort of impossible? Evidently not. It's just modern agents and your slavish regard for realism. <laughs> I feel that was a call-out to Grand Comics. Uh, anyway, he kills Woody Allen, 
and goes back home. He also leaves a suitcase bomb to blow up the pool so nobody else can get it. Uh, then we get a half and half, part black and white, so we get to turn the comic like this to finish that section, which is basically, hey, we're all surprised you're young now. Okay, let's get in the ship before it blows up. Hey, <laughs> it blew up. <clears throat> uh, we then find our unattractive women back in the ocean. They're still going wherever they're going. And then, this is kind of cool, I guess. So as they're going along, um, they notice a, a moving rock, and then we keep seeing these scenes of what I thought was going to be a big sea monster, and I was like, oh, know who's getting raped. But uh, no, it's actually just some insanely ripped dude. I'm guessing he's uh, League's version of Aquaman. He just swoops up their freaking submarine and walks off. <laughs> um, anyway, that was this issue. And then we get a little freebie of seven stars. But this is the best part of the entire comic right here. H.C. Edwards Pocket Money Arcade. I'm just gonna... Let me see. Is that really your body they can see through your clothes? Make your friends think they have x-ray eyes with our pers perspex clothing. <laughs> uh, kids, be an aquanaut with our polythene bag diving helmet. Works like a real diving helmet for an extremely limited period of time. Fake ersatz reefers. <laughs> this is the best part, and you don't really get a lot of stuff with these fake cartoon commercials anymore. Or ads anymore, because... Uh, because people are fucking retarded and they don't see the humor in this and they think this shit is real. But yeah, this is definitely the best part of this whole comic. Uh, and then Seven Stars is classic, I'm sure. I haven't read it. I mean, I read this one, but I haven't read anything else. Anyway, if you're English or a League fan or uh, particularly an Alan Moore fan, then you might like this. I don't know anything about League except for the movie. Um... I think Alan Moore can be a good writer. Uh, I don't think he is anymore. <laughs> um, and I think the art was pretty low tier. But, I mean, it was consistent, so that's that. Um, it's hard to complain when it's consistent, because that's really the biggest indicator to, of an artist's skill, in my opinion. Consistency. Anyway, I don't recommend this. I won't be picking up anymore. But uh, if anybody else likes it, feel free to pick it up, check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hydra baby. <laughs>